guys, Dr. Dan over here. Uh, thanks for joining the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Hopefully you learn a little bit of something on here, whether it comes to body aches, pains, movement, skeletal health, whatever. We love to balance the skeleton. We like to reduce aches and pains with natural health care. This is Robbie. Robbie is a uh, graduate of college? Yeah, just graduated last, last spring. From Pitt? Yep. Nice. Uh, now he's doing some research work or some kind of like post-ish graduate stuff? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a research tech, so, you know, a lot of sitting in, in the fume hood. Oh, yeah, the, what's that called? The uh, the hood or something? Yeah, the fume hood, you know, I have to oh, reach my arms in the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lots of, lots of, uh, lots of forward bending, but stays active, works out how many days a week? Oh, try five days a week at least. Five days a week, beautiful. Dude adjusts really nicely, really connected to his body. We just want to coach him through here for some wellness care. He does have a little bit of a knee issue. We'll show you how his knee doesn't bend well because he's a little bit front chain dominant on the uh, left leg or right leg? Right, right leg. leg. Right leg, that's right. And uh, so overall, uh, the dude knows how to coil. He played lacrosse for 10 years. About 10 ish years. Yeah. And pretty good athletic career, right? I played, played uh, one or two years in college. I played two years in college. And then decided to just kind of focus on studies and stuff, right? Nice. So Robbie knows how to sit tall. Robbie's got a nice head position, ear over shoulder. Generally, he's got uh, some nice back muscle activation and a softish neck. Uh, put your hands in your thighs for me. Keep your feet a little closer together. And then just kind of push down through your hands lightly. And let's move chest forward and upward. And now shoulders downward, nice. Remember how we talked about this is just a light hold back here, right? And we could focus on the left lat. I think it was you the other day. Did you cramp up down here a little bit? On the right side, I think. On the right side. Now the right side is the tighter side, so we'll get there. But let's think about this long left elbow. See how you can kind of connect down here? Now try to connect down into the right side. A little, what, what would you say? Crampy. A little crampy, it cramps yeah. up right away. So Robbie's working on a little bit of coiling. We can coil when we stand. We can coil when we sit. We can over-exaggerate a coil, which could be a, a lean down into here, a tucked elbow, or a tucked elbow down into here, okay? You see when I kind of tuck the elbow and how it turns the tricep on a little bit? And if I want to extend this arm down here, or extend this arm down here, we're gonna, we're gonna really get strong in this huge wing muscle. Right, this is our wing muscle, it's our lat. Our lat tucks, right? Our lat delt supraspinatus. If we're gonna caulk and throw anything, especially the cross stick, right? We, we can be up in the shoulder of the neck and we can come in and say, my neck's killing me. Or we can hold stuff down here in the back and get nice and fluid as we throw through the back muscles, got it? You may cramp up under here. You may cramp down here, you may cramp here. Doesn't matter where we cramp. We're trying to slightly activate each of these muscle fibers with a little bit of a coil, right? Now we can coil in our pockets, right? We can double squeeze back nice and lightly. We can bend the chest forward and upward and right side and left side, all right? So look chin to chest, left side, right side. Right side's a little bit, a little bit tougher, right? A little yeah. bit weaker. Cramping right? down low. <laughs> cramping down low. May cramp into it a little bit, right? Dude's firing his lat up. He's getting mega powerful. So if we are in the gym, and I don't get to work out with Robbie here, Bree, but uh, Robbie's going to his own gym, you can do a lot of, a lot of times if you're working out, you're doing linear stuff, like a preacher curl, or like a barbell bicep curl, or maybe you're doing alternating bicep curls. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. 20, 25, 30, 35 pound weight, something like that. What I want you to start to work on is a little coil, which is going to be a left side, right side. When we pull that weight up, we're going to try to feel it into the back a little bit. Is that cool? Yep. Nice. Let's go hands down at side. Let's go fingers in. Now we're going to light Robbie up with some nice flexibility because we know he's doing a lot of, uh, like what's your duties under the hood, the fume hood? I mean, it's a lot of... Uh pipetting and stuff like that so you know I'm taking salt uh, solutions out of and you know putting it into other beakers and whatnot beakers so. yes oh man I miss organic chem <laughs> he's a, you're a chem major right right yes 
Uh, so, you know, when you go to chiropractic school, good conversation. Uh, you, he's a chem major, I was bio pre-med, so we still took, you know, we took chem one, chem two, uh, organic chem one, organic chem two, uh, microbio, you know, he had to take more high level chem classes, right? Biochemistry we took as well. But uh, pipettes, beakers, I forgot all those words, petri dishes, I don't know if you're growing anything, I guess that's more microbio. Bunsen burners, cool. Take some science, some anatomy classes. They're awesome. You'll learn so much. It's so fun. You didn't blow anything up yet, did you? No, not yet. <laughs> All right, no, 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 no. Hey. Oh, crap. I wasn't supposed to put that in there. <laughs> no. All right. So, anyway, right shoulder back, left shoulder back. Feel how nice it feels to coil? Yeah. All right. Dude has a nice soft neck, which is what we want to see. Strong back, strong lats. Nice little freedom through the left shoulder. Nice little freedom through the right shoulder. Got that? All right, now he's got tight fingers, definitely has tight wrists, straight elbows. Nice, feel how that's tough, yeah? <laughs> so this is max back chain fire up, it's triceps. But Robbie, what if I say squeeze this left tricep? What if I say squeeze this right tricep? Left tricep, right tricep, nice. See how his fingers are kind of bent up down here? So let's see how he does with the short lever back chain activation, because this is long lever back chain activation. Relax your arms now. Now we're gonna do something a little different, Rob. If we say long chain or long lever, long lever means flat palms, straight elbows, soft back chain pull, correct. Left side, right side. Just kind of get in tune with this back side right here, right? Now we're gonna relax the arms. We're gonna raise the wrists. We're gonna keep the fingers down, the four fingers. Pick your thumbs up a little bit. Let's move back a little bit. Is that tough already? Yeah. Can you lower your shoulders out of your neck? Correct. You feel how much softer up here? Right. Can you lower your shoulders more out of your neck? You can on the left. Yeah, not much on the right. Not yeah. much on the right. So this will feel a little different after we adjust them. It's not going to be perfect because one adjustment doesn't fix anything. Repetitive adjustments also, it fixes a little bit of stuff. Got to reprogram the brain. How does the left side feel? Much looser, less crampy. Less crampy. <laughs> Way more crampy over here. So when we think about, you took some neuroanatomy maybe or no? No. No but... brain classes. So there's this awesome port of, part of the brain um, called the sensory and the motor cortex. And that's where we've got 300 and 300 muscles that feel sensation coming in and send muscle activation back out, right? So what we talk about afferent and efferent fibers. Um, or pathways, right? Notice how this left coils? Notice how this right coils. Now he lost his palms a little bit, so we're gonna restretch the fingers out. But we're gonna focus, let's relax for me, let's take a rest. Right here, fingers down. Raise left palm up, set left shoulder down, correct. Push right down there, keep your shoulder down. That's tough, yeah? Yeah. Now let's try to hold that, but do the same on the right side. Elbow in, shoulder down, palm lightly up. Oh, hold. <laughs> hold on, we're not there yet. Shoulder down, wrist up, push down. No, relax, shoulder down. So I'm helping, now don't lean into it, sit up tall. Let's relax. Repress palms, tall sit. Beautiful, feel how nice and soft in the neck. Double palms up, double, let's slide them back. Soft wrist bend. Feel how easy this left wrist is? How's the right side? Tight, tight. <laughs> Shoulders down, okay? So Robbie's gonna work this week on some short lever, back chain. Yeah, nice, raise that wrist up. Oh, there it is, it's gonna tap in. First left side. Still tight on the left side, it's not, not perfect. He's got tight fingers. He's been in college for like four years. Doing a lot of writing, a lot of typing, a lot of studying. Never, did you ever stretch like this? No, never. Gotta do it. If you don't do it, you get carpal tunnel. You get tight, stiff fingers as we age. We get more neck tension. We get way less back activation. Dude is still young. If we don't do this, over the next five, 10 years, neck chronically gets tighter. We lose connection to our back muscles. We become less runner. We become less sprinter, we become 
more tight in the regions we don't want to. We have more complaints of neck pain, back pain, stuff like that. Robbie knows how to coil nice and lightly. I love how the left wrist is up, but you feel how messed, uh, how stiff this right wrist is, right? Yep. That's nice. Boom, 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 boom. You can be real light, right? Head up, chest up, shoulders down. Left shoulder down, beautiful. Right shoulder down, beautiful. Left shoulder down, left wrist up. Oh, there we go, tap in. See how nice that feels? Try to do the same on the right side. There it is. Left side. Right side. Oh, nice. Nice, there he goes. Now he's getting into his back chain, but then he starts to pull his neck, so we got a compensation up in the right side neck. Brain's a little wired to pull us up here when we want to say, no, brain, I want you to be strong down here. Cool. All right, rest, palms open. Soft shoulders open, correct. Come around here, Bree. This feel for you? This feels okay. It's okay? If you notice, his right elbow is more kinked, yeah. more than the left elbow. So let's go a little wider. Let's go super soft left elbow straight, super soft right elbow straight. Feel the difference on the right side? This is called a light, tall sit, palms down and open, okay? You might feel this bicep is wicked tight right here. You might feel this elbow crease. Oh man, this left side's loose, this right side's tight as heck right here. So brain's pre-wired to be tight through the bicep, tight through the forearm. Left shoulder cuts, left elbow straightens. Right shoulder cuts, right elbow straightens. You notice the difference? You're gonna sit and watch TV or you're gonna take a break in the gym and just sit on a bench and coil a little bit to fire up your back chain. It's gonna instantly make you do pull-ups better or barbell rows or bicep curls or whatever it is that we do. Straighten that tricep. It's also gonna connect him to his right tricep, help his neck to loosen up a little easier. Man. Arms down on ground, big man. Now, Robbie's got the nice high arch athletic feet. He's got stiff, strong feet, which is a good thing. He's got tight knees, though, a little bit quad dominant. Did you feel crampy on the right side up in the lat, right? Yep. Now, the right lat's tied down into the right hamstring. It's also tied into the left hamstring as well. Go ahead, push into my hand for me. And stop. Go ahead, push lightly right there, light, right there. And stop. And push. And stop. And push. And stop. And push. And stop and push, and stop, and push. One more time, big time. Push, 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 push. And stop. Short circuit, push. Not strong and stable, right? Yep. Go ahead, keep going. One more time. Relax for me. <clears throat> Good. Toes, relax foot. One, two, three, four, nice, five, good work. Back down, left side. See a difference? Feel the difference, I should say? Yep. Way less tight, right? Yep. Now, push into my hand still. Push, push. Stop, stop. Push, push. Keep going. Stop, stop. Push, push. 
stop, stop. So we're going to give Robbie uh, nice. Look at that big toe on the way up. Okay. Right here. We're going to give Robbie the rocker. There goes his SI joint already. That's nice. All right. Deep inhale, big man. Deep exhale down. Shoulders rest down. Shoulders down. Nice. Breath in. Exhale, chest down. One, two, three. One more breath in. Exhale, chest down. Relax mid. Good. Now, CT. Gonna feel nice. Over here. Just relax your neck on the right. Good. Now, one more here on the nice left side. All right. Face over right side up, big man. So, we talked about front chain dominance a couple times. A little bit of tight quads on the right side. If we got tight quads on the right side, roll, exhale out, look up towards the ceiling, open these up, nice, other side for me. If we got tight quads, tight knee, we need more back chain, okay, because knee pain is front chain injury. Inhale deep, exhale roll, flat on back for me, okay. Good? Yep. So we have two different kinds of people. We have generally, well, we got three different kinds of people. We have, we'll say, the hypermobile soft mover, okay? Somebody that's really flexible, a yoga person, they can stretch, they can bend, they can do all kinds of nice stuff with their arms, they can move really nicely, they're high, they're, they may be a little hypermobile, right? They might be a little too flexible. Then you got somebody that's uh, super stiff, they can't move at all. I can't raise my arm up, I can't turn my head, my range of motion is gone. And then you got somebody that's in the middle like me and Robbie. And Robbie's a little more on the stiff side, we want him to be a little more on the soft side. We still want him to be strong. We don't want to be too soft, we don't want to be too hard, we want to be right in the middle. Okay, cool. And to do that, we definitely got to work the core, which name of the game has been dead bug today. Dead bug, we want to see 90 degrees of flexion, okay? okay. You're at 7580, okay? Hold your leg here, twist your knee out, open. Ugh. That tough, right? Yep. So, how much do you squat at the gym? I haven't squatted that much recently, but I'd say about 285. Maybe. 285, big dude, right? Strong dude. You can squat at the gym. This is tough though, right? This is probably, we'll say, 30, 30-ish pounds, 35 pounds of leg weight. Knee open. Nice. Okay. So, we squat a whole bunch. Squats glutes, hamstrings, squats knees, quads. Squats core a little bit, if the technique's good. It's a lot of core. Foot compensating, relax toes, twist knee open, okay? So you're gonna lay on your living room floor at home. You're gonna watch TV, because that's super simple to do, right? You're gonna think foot relaxed. You're gonna think knee open. You're gonna breathe in nice and deeply. You're gonna breathe out. Now we're gonna coach him on some diaphragmatic breathing also down the road, because he's a little bit of chest breather you saw. Open this up a little bit. Nice, see how tough this gets? Calm breath in, nice, there's his belly. He knows where to go. Exhale out, nice and comfortable, cool. Inhale deeply, focus on the twitchiness, focus on the shakiness, exhale, twist the knee open. See how we engage it a little more? Now if I say straighten your knee, you may cramp quickly here. You cramping? Yeah, twist your knee open, grip your toes down, so we need to isolate the heck out of this stuff, okay? Take a rest. Raise your right leg up. Three things, foot up, knee open, did it already, foot relaxed, did it already, so I'm check his foot. Inhale through your nose into your belly, 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 good, little bit belly, that was a mixed breath, exhale out, knee open. Don't have to go with a super straight knee, can back off it a little bit, back off it more. Twist it open. Now this is your bad knee. It's not bad, it's just painful right now. Would you say this side's tougher? Yeah, Way tougher. 
so his core is more shut off on the right side than the left side, making your pelvis a little unbalanced. We adjusted his low back already, we adjusted his sacrum already. We need to work, bend this knee a little bit, bend it more. Let's pull it up a little higher. Let's let the knee bend more. Let's twist the knee open. See how we can make it like a little easier for the core? Inhale deeply, exhale deeply, torque out. Feel all this work up here, okay? You gotta do this at home. I would say 20, 25, 30 breaths per side, or you can do, make it simple, 10 or 12, right? I do three or four sets of 10, three or four sets of 12, something like that. Or you can time yourself and do one or two or three minutes per side, okay? Definitely wanna work on this right leg. If I say straighten the knee, twist the knee open, you may cramp on this side worse, yeah. okay? You might feel this massive, sweet quad cramp, okay? Take a rest for me. That makes sense? Yep. So you definitely gotta work some dead bug this weekend and next week, and every week moving forward a little bit. I might only do 10 or 15 minutes a week because that's all I need now. I would recommend that you do like 30 to 60 minutes or even longer. You know, you don't have to do a straight 60 minute workout of that, but you could do 10 minutes a couple times a week and try to get an hour or two hours a week into dead bug position. You'll notice after like two, three weeks, your stomach will be way stronger. You'll be able to breathe much easier under tension. Did you feel there was a lot of tension doing that? Right. So stress builds up. And if we don't breathe under tension, we snap. Oh, I'm gonna snap, right? I can't handle this anymore. Feet down lightly. So we wanna learn how in stressful situations, remain calm and creating a little bit of core stability. Nice, buddy. Definitely gotta do palms down and open. Remember how we rested with the palm down? Stretch this right bicep out big time. What's this scar from right there, actually? I think I had like a little mole or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that made it freeze it off. <laughs> yeah. Now that may be part of what makes this right arm more contracted than the left arm. Okay. Oh. Just having any surgery, any stitch, any injury, it creates a little, little bit of kind of like emotional stress, tension, pain, maybe a little bit of soft tissue. Left side's easier. Relax. Nice. Elbow easier. Still tight, but easier, right? Cool. Hands down here. Feet touch together lightly. All right. Last step. Right shoulder, relax. Right shoulder down. Nice. All right. Sit up tall, big man. We want Robert to watch a little bit of TV, do a little bit of dead bug, okay? You can lay flat on the floor, do the dead bug for like five, 10, 15 minutes. Then you can sit right on your butt on the floor and start to work just on a nice sit through here, straighten your right elbow, nice. Feel how your left elbow shoulder cuts, feel how your right side straighten your right elbow. You're gonna work on that positional work right there. Head's gonna stay straight. See how free this side is? See how that side's still carrying a little bit of tension, right? So Robbie's gonna be mindful that we stretch the neck softly and we definitely work way down here. Feel how that's tough, buddy? Verse over here is easy. Verse over here is tough. So we did what we could with our adjustment today and notice how left shoulder's soft. Notice how right shoulder's just 2% more turned on. Straighten the right elbow a little bit. Definitely work on this flexibility, stretchability down in this right forearm, right wrist. If you can, you overcorrect it a little bit, you really turn out. You just softly sit, doesn't have to be hard. You can twist, you can twist. Cool? Gotta work this, gotta work dead bug. Uh, one more thing, let's come out in the hallway. Let's go. Guys, uh, so we're gonna finish with a little bit of uh, backward view rocker position. Robbie, what I want you to do, big toes touch together. Can you try to sit down into your hips like this a little bit? You can touch your fingers to the ground. Okay. Keep your fingers forward. Are you able to sit on your legs? It's tough, yeah? yeah? Super tough. So let's put your hands back on the floor. What I want Robbie to do, we're gonna work on the back chain rocker position. So Robbie, if I say come out of it a little bit, tilt your butt back like this, and then let your shoulders pull back lightly. You can go on what we call tent fingers. 
and I want your middle finger to always be pointed forward. Okay. Or we can go down into flat palms like this. And you're going to start to just, we'll say, rock over the left side. Rock over the right side a little bit. Rock over the left side, right side. Try to feel yourself holding your breath and just try to relax as you slide into it. We'll say slide left, slide right. Does that make sense? Yep. If I say let's lift up chest a little bit and let's try to put hands on knees if we can, be real light through the shoulders up here. Try to sit over on the right side. Feel how tight this right knee is. Yeah, okay. How's the left side feel if we sit over on? Not as bad, right? Okay. Come back to center, wiggle your knees in close together. Nice. And let's just rock left and rock right. So you can do a little bit of finger support like this. And then if we go flat palms down, let's work that shoulder. Yes, nice, dude. Feel nice. That feels, feel the mid back and the spine start to rotate a little bit. You can focus lightly on some lat tricep activation. Okay. And just rock left, rock right. Got it? Cool. So we want to do maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes of rocker. And then let's flip over. And then we'll go legs out in front of us. And then, Robbie, this is where we're going to work middle fingers forward. We can do a flat palm down. We can get nice and free in the mid-back. Or we can start to gently transition up. Okay? And what you want to start working on, big man, is a little bit of finger flexibility back here. This is great living room time. When we're in the uh, living room, we got the TV on or whatever. We're working on the double bow set outside edge, the feet. And I'm going to turn around and help him out here. The feet spread a little bit. The feet are going to turn in gently, okay? You're going to think about your knees. Remember we talked about the knee. Look how your left knee opens up. Try to open that right knee up. Feel the difference here? Yeah. Okay. How about we go to fist just so we make it a little easier. Feel how we want to cut, 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 cut. Get nice and free through, through the left and the right. And now let's roll the feet open a little bit. And let's wiggle the butt left and right. Or point the feet back up to the ceiling and wiggle a little bit. Nice, now go back to center, just go shoulders double open. Yep, stretch neck, stretch neck. Twist knees open, twist feet in lightly. Feel like it's, you can see your left knee versus your right knee. Yeah. You're gonna work on that right knee twisting open. And you might wanna wiggle and kind of like grind your butt out on the ground a little bit. Cool? So you could do this 20 minutes at home, you could do some back chain rest, you could do some flat palms rest, you could do some fingertip rest. Those are all, those all get into the back chain nicely and the back chain's the back shoulder. Then we can flip right over into the rocker. And these are all ground-based exercises, right? This is ground-based, ground-based. We've got to get back on the ground to get the body strong, to get the core strong, to get the spine strong. Maybe we want to lean forward. And if we want to crank it up as things get easier, we're going to work on some high knee raises as that, oh, as that ankle, foot, and front chain get way more flexible. Now, we may also get a cramp. So let's pick one knee up. Squeeze the bottom of your left foot. Think about, yeah, you cramping already? <laughs> yeah. Nice. How about we do this side if we can? Squeeze the bottom of your right foot. That's going to cramp worse on the right foot. Okay, take a rest. Wiggle the cramps out of the feet a little bit. They should go away after you just kind of wiggle. In your brain right now, if I say squeeze both your feet together, see how that feels as you kind of tighten them up a little bit. So we want to turn on the back chain. We want to relax the front chain. Just as we work out, we got to think with our brain, where are we feeling the exercise at? And that's the important thing is that you got good posture, you got good technique, you definitely have good brain connection. I can adjust this dude over and over and over again, but if we don't teach him how to exercise the right way, which you guys are going to get more and more exercise at home videos as we build this channel up, and we're going to build perfect bodies for everybody out there, which is mainly done at home. I'm just a little support for this bro to teach him. We're going to teach all you guys how to build a strong body. Uh, and that's going to be part of our Move Fit program, our Optimal Health program. All our clients here in the office and gym, we coach them through. We increase their athletic performance, all the while reducing skeletal pain. Cool? All right, buddy. Peace. Nice work. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll see you later. My name is Dr. Dan. Follow, like, subscribe. We'll see you on the channel for future videos.